Hello and oh sorry, hold on, here I am. <laughs> Hi, welcome uh, to my uh, tutorial series uh, where every week we, I'm walking you through building a website using Divi and WordPress. Uh, in case we haven't met, my name is Anya and I'm uh, streaming live to our Facebook group, the Divi Lovers Facebook group. So if you're watching a, a, reply, a replay on my YouTube channel, I invite you to join us. And if you're watching me uh, live right now, hi, welcome. I'm very, very happy uh, that you decided to join me today. Uh, so I can uh, see your comments here on the side and there's a tiny delay. So just let me give me one second to see if I can um, see any of you here. Hi Oliver, it's great to have you. Hi guys, I can't display your, um, you know, your your uh, profile photos if you don't allow Ecamm to give permissions because we are in a private group. But uh, anyways, it's great to have you. Hi from Puerto Rico. Wow, <laughs> I envy you. The weather must be lovely because here in Poland, hello, hi, here in Poland, it's still so, so, so cold. <laughs> like the winter doesn't go away. Okay, guys, it's great uh, that, uh, that you're here with me. Uh, I'm very happy to, to do this. Uh, um, last week, we've uh, created a homepage and today I uh, give, gave this event a title adding scripts uh, and mobile adjustments in Divi because uh, that's what I would like to do. I would like to kind of fix the things uh, in our homepage that maybe are not perfect and I did some mistakes last week so I want to show you what didn't uh, when uh, what didn't go as, as planned because I was kind of in a hurry. So uh, for today, my plans aren't very ambitious, big ambition because I realized that um, what I planned for last week was a bit too much for an hour. So today we're going to take it slow, but I hope it will still be very helpful. Uh, hi guys, it's so, so great to, uh, to see you all. Um, one second. Hi, Valentin. I see you. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, okay. Um, let's get to work, right? So let me share my uh, Chrome with you. Okay. Here is our homepage, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it's not the... I don't love it, <laughs> especially because of this awkward picture of me but uh, okay it's you know better done than perfect as they say but it's it's not uh, it's not terrible but we did some very very uh, bad things to it like if I resize this window you see what's happening here in these three columns it's it's a mess right so and then I am giant in the middle, so we have to fix all that. But first, uh, I wanted to talk about adding custom uh, scripts to, to Divi. We've already kind of did that when we uh, created our child theme and I showed you how to enqueue JavaScript file. Well, it wasn't working, but <laughs> I showed you later. Uh, so sometimes you... Um, see some jQuery plugins or scripts or even not jQuery related but just plain JavaScript scripts that you um, can download because they are free and they come with sort of instructions on how to use it. Usually you have to upload the script file and then there is some kind of markup, uh, HTML markup you should follow to, to be able to use it the way it was intended. So uh, I wanted to um, kind of show you how, how to do that based on a, one script that we uh, are going to use on this site because I think it's very useful and it's uh, also very lightweight so it doesn't uh, you know load forever but it is going to uh, make maybe 
<laughs> a nicer experience for you when you're copying the code because what I mean is let me show you my recent single post so basically each post on this website is a replay of of these uh, walkthrough videos and then I'm sharing so here is my YouTube uh, video with the last week's um, live and below I usually share some code I used in that uh, in that episode <laughs> let's call it okay but right now it's kind of hard to read because it's all like a big chunk of code so there is there are uh, actually a few different ones, but uh, the one I'm referring to is called Prism JavaScript. And let me scroll back here. So it's basically a um, syntax highlighter. Once you load that script on your website, it will highlight the bits of code. So they are, you know, easier to read. <laughs> and I think it will be very useful on our site. So let's go ahead and install it uh, here. Uh, okay, so on, on the Prism.js uh, website, we have this huge download button. So I'm going to, there are many different options because it can highlights different languages, but we don't need all that. I basically am only sharing CSS and uh, JavaScript on occasion. So the default settings are, uh, are okay. And let me just scroll to the bottom. And we have two files, JavaScript file and CSS file that we need to download. So first let me uh, download the JavaScript and now the CSS. Okay, so I have these files on my, on my computer disk. <laughs> and now how do we uh, get them to be loaded on our website. So I am using a child theme. You know how I did that. I am connecting uh, to my server through FTP. Let me share my code. One second. What's happening here? Let's close that. Okay, there we go. Just let me one. That's better, sorry. Okay, so here's my uh, coda. This is the style sheet, um, this style CSS file. And I do have already some JavaScript loaded here. It's inside the JS folder. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a, another file in here in, inside my child theme folder. So just let me grab it and I will just drop it here. So it's uploading. Okay, it's really not that big, I think. <laughs> well, anyway, we want to move this inside my JavaScript uh, folder. So everything is nicely organized here. And now inside functions PHP, we have already used the nq script function to um, well nq uh, the playground scripts javascript and we can use the same exact function to nq another file right so i'm just going to copy this i will rename it it's prism and the file it's also called Prism JS. But what I want to do to make it a bit more interesting for you guys <laughs> is I want to load this JavaScript file only on single post page because I'm not sharing any code on my home page or on any other pages. All the code I'll be sharing will always be a displayed on single post page. That's why I would like to load this JavaScript only then, only there. So how do we do that? Let me show you my, that's not right, one second. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
sorry, I uh, hide, um, hid, I've hidden my Chrome. Okay, never mind. So um, I want to load my script only on the single post page. WordPress comes with the thing that is called conditional tags. So just me Google conditional tags WordPress real quick. And that takes me to WordPress codex page, the best place to copy any code WordPress related. And uh, we have different conditions we can use inside our PHP functions. And one of them is, let me scroll down, a single post. So is single function will basically uh, will run when a single post of any post type except attachment and page post type is being displayed. And for my side, it's fine because I won't be using any additional post types like projects, for example, it's a different post type. But uh, since I only have posts, <laughs> then this condition is, is good enough. So let me, oh, 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 come on. Let me copy this and now back to back here, we can do an if statement. So if this condition, if is single, and then we do open uh, and close brackets, this goes inside. Okay, so if is single, please enqueue my script. And let's save that. And just to uh, show you if it works, okay? <laughs> or before that, before then, let's, uh, sorry, go back here and let's also add our uh, CSS uh, file, right? So um, I'm not going to enqueue additional CSS uh, file just for this, but I will copy the CSS that's inside the file I downloaded, the Prism, um, CSS. So this is that the content of this file. No, sorry. Here it is. The um, you see, it's not very. Uh, it isn't a lot of CSS, so I can put that inside my main style sheet. There's no need to load a separate file. Okay, so just let me go back here to my uh, no here my style CSS file. And then at the bottom, I will add this CSS I downloaded from Prism website. Okay, and now let me just remember, change that number. <laughs> I'm not sure if I need to do it, but let's just make sure our CSS gets loaded on the, on the main page. Okay, so back in Chrome my uh, single post page, that's how it looked before. And now if I refresh the page, hmm, wait for it. <laughs> okay, that's not great. Let me see, do, is our JavaScript being loaded? So do we have Prism, it's here, but I'm guessing my uh, CSS is not um, inside my, yes, that's the, oh, it is. Okay, so let's, let's refresh. Oh, okay, hmm, yes, I know. So remember when I mentioned that, um, that we should uh, follow the some sort of markup that's uh, requested by the script we want to use. So back here on the prison page, uh, we'll see um, basic usage section. And it shows us that we have to include a link to CSS file, include our JavaScript file, and then we want to uh, mark our code um, blocks with the class language hyphen, what's the language? So for CSS would be language hyphen CSS. So let me go back here and edit the post because right now 
everything is loaded, the CSS is loaded and the JavaScript is loaded, but our markup doesn't fit what's requested by, uh, by the plugin, right? So, sorry. Okay, so uh, edit post. I'm not using the DV Builder to edit the posts here. I'm using the Gutenberg blocks because I basically have this, my YouTube embedded video, a paragraph of text, and then my blog with, with code, right? So in, Gut in Gutenberg, we can uh, add CSS classes to any block by using the advanced tab here additional CSS classes. And I could specify language CSS. Okay, and let's update. Lovely, right? So it looks much better, but <laughs> uh, I kind of don't love the colors but it happens to that, <laughs> that I have uh, the, prepared this, uh, the same exact code, but I just replaced the color hex code. So just bear with me. Inside my coda, I have my version of the same exact code, okay? So I just um, simply replaced some of the hex codes. So if we let me just replace it here as well because that was one of the default themes they offer but it doesn't mean that we cannot customize it to match the rest of the site right so let me save that and now let's preview it much better, right? So, okay, so that was, uh, I hope, easy for you. Please do let me know in the comments if, if you have any question about this method. Different scripts will require different HTML markup that's needed, and sometimes it can be tricky in DV to achieve that, but there's always a code module, so you can always like create your own HTML, so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so now let's get to uh, <laughs> to fixing our homepage, okay? That's the, for me the more important part because I do want this page to, to look pretty. And right now it, it doesn't really look that great. So let me, um, let me show you. Hi, Michael, thank you. <laughs> It's good to see you and I'm glad the comments are working. So <laughs> thanks, okay. So, okay, as you see, when I uh, resize my uh, browser window, even still on desktop, I, my image is kind of floating in the middle, which is awkward and the sp spacing here is terrible. So what I want to do, I want to align this image to the bottom and align this text in the center. And we don't have uh, a way to vertically align content within the DV Builder settings, but we can easily achieve that using the, some a tiny bit of CSS. Okay, so if I go to the Visual Builder, and first of all, this image is, I think we've changed the sizing last week but only um, I wanted to resize it on tablet and then it was resized on desktop as well. So max width should be 100% because it's uh, for desktop, but for tablet, we already did the reverse columns on mobile uh, last week. So my first column goes to the bottom when we switch to the um, mobile uh, version. So that's good, but I do want to decrease the size of that when it's, oops, okay. Or maybe even smaller, like 60. And then I want to align it to the left on, you can't see it, but 
if it's in the center, it looks kind of awkward. So what I also want to do is add a bit of space at the top. So padding top, because I'm going to control a uh, spacing, uh, like the size of this section by using padding at the top of the image instead of padding for the text. Okay, so for uh, desktop, 80 pixels should be fine. And we can decrease that for, for tablet because obviously that's too much space. Um, and here, okay, so that's that's fine. But now uh, going back to, to um, desktop view, I want to make sure that this is always at the bottom. So if I, you know, re uh, resize it, it doesn't float. Uh, well, it's not accurate here. Right now it is bigger, but if the if the text has more padding, then the image flows. You've seen that before. So we can do that using the sec um, settings inside our row. So if I go to my row, I will first remove the top padding because I want the space to be only controlled by the modules inside. Okay, so no padding for the row. Important part, I want to equalize column heights this way, well, you'll see in a moment. So equalize columns heights, turn to yes. And now inside a content, um, you see this um, text module is at the top. That's the default alignment for any HTML element, but we can move it to the middle um, with some custom CSS. And we are going to use Flexbox and Flexbox works uh, in a way that it needs, to, if we want to align elements in a certain order, we have to target this these elements parent container. Okay, so in this case, we want to align module and the HTML parent container is a column, right? So inside the second column settings, and I will add my CSS right here instead of the child team because it will be quicker, so advanced uh, sec uh, settings, custom CSS, main element. I'm adding CSS to the column settings. And I can uh, say display flex, align items, center, just like that magic, right? So it works very well if there's just one uh, module inside. Uh, well, it works also quite well with multiple modules, but it's perfect for aligning single module in the middle. But we have to make sure that the module itself uh, doesn't have um, unequal spacing top and bottom because that would put it off center. Uh, but before we do that, let's get uh, go to the um, first column settings. And you're going to have to trust me on this because we can't see it here, but we can do the same exact thing, but um, ask our lovely browser to align this uh, module to the bottom and not in the center. Okay, so also display flex, align, uh, sorry, align items, bottom, oh, not cotton, <laughs> bottom. Okay, it obviously right now it doesn't do anything, but it does, trust me. Okay, so um, display flex, align it. I'm okay, just checking if I didn't make any uh, spelling errors. I do that. I do that a lot. Okay, so save the changes. And now, as I mentioned, I want to make sure this uh, element doesn't have to uh, unequal um, spacing. So let's check that. Okay, it's 50 50. I want to. Uh, increase it to be honest let's do 80 top and bottom just so you know it's not too close to the well let's give it some room okay and for tablet mm, this preview is kind of uh, we don't need as much especially at the bottom so top is probably fine let's add that breathing room but let's try zero at the bottom oh sorry top 80 
okay, that's that's good enough because the a quart picture has some space here, so it's still it's still fine. And for phone, um, we sh we can leave it as well, or maybe let's do fifty. It's probably not the best way to you know guess all the values as as I go. It I should create some system in advance and only use the same spaci spacing across different elements but yeah it's a bit different when i'm uh, trying to do it live uh, every week and uh, you know i don't have a plan on what i'm be going to do next <laughs> just kind of figure out as i go so uh, okay so this kind of uh, looks better already let's just save that and let me just exit the builder for a moment so I can preview how that you see kind of nice well ta horizontal tablet is always a bit awkward we might move it but it's fine it's I would leave it it's it's okay I would say so um, so that's fixed <laughs> but the next thing the awful you see what's happening here it's disaster really so let's uh, let's fix that okay let's fix these three blurbs below the uh, hero section so back in the builder what i did wrong let me show you inside the um, text uh, blurb uh, settings design sizing and i set the pixel value for the width which is like crazy stupid uh, <laughs> beginner's mistake uh, you never want to assign a pixel val value for your width settings well sometimes you do but not um, it won't work it may not work well on, uh, when it has to be responsive so instead i can do max width pixel value but width itself should be per percentages <laughs> set in percentages okay so max width 300 that's fine and with uh, 90 uh, per uh, percent that will work much better so let's copy these settings okay and now um, do you see how we've when I hover over the row you can uh, kind of see how the because we've added border into the middle columns uh, settings and you can see how in unequal it is and that's because it uses uh, margins between columns so there is a middle column and there's some margin and there are the left left and right columns right so that's why the border is set on the column itself and we want these lines to be in the center so to fix that we have to change the gutter uh, the gutter width so use custom gutter width and decrease it to one which let's save that now when i hover when you see where the row is now the three columns are equally spaced because the mm, they are touching each other so the border is right in the in between them okay so that's better like for uh, it looks better but now decreasing the gutter width also changes the default bottom margin that's applied to all modules by default to zero so we have to add some space in between the blur module and the button here so design um, spacing and let's try 20 pixels bottom margin let's try extending this margin to all blurbs throughout this section Yay, it worked. The third one also. Okay, lovely. <laughs> so um, now let's uh, let's save that. Another the next uh, mobile issue on uh, with with this this section. Let's let me save this and uh, refresh on the front end. So now if I resize my Okay, so it's 980 pixels and it's already like doing this 
full width thing which I don't think is necessary at this breakpoint. We could still fit the, these three columns in here. So what I would like to do is I would like to keep the three columns um, row structure for tablet. Okay, that's what I want to do. And we also need to use custom CSS. Our favorite, right? <laughs> I uh, really <laughs> love CSS. I'm like, super weird <laughs> but i hope you like it too <laughs> let me know let me know okay so inside the row settings because uh, we are also going to use flexbox and i'm uh, i could add a custom css class but just to show you how simple it is let me uh, switch to tablet view so our elements HTML elements uh, in a HTML structure um, are columns. They are within row and on tablet, they are set to be full width, right? They stack one under another. So we need to target the row in order to align the columns using Flexbox. The same that we align modules by targeting columns, this time we want to align columns. So row settings, advanced, custom CSS, and look at this magic. I hope it will work. <laughs> but display, uh, sorry, no, let me just s switch to tablet. Okay, display, flex. You see, just like that, we don't need to add anything else because by default, flex uh, aligns everything in, um, not in rows, but in columns and also in the center. So that's exactly what we want here. And then on phone, we want this to be block again. So on phone, phones are narrower. We won't fit all three columns. So for phone is fine, but for tablet, let's use flex, right? And on desktop, we don't use any CSS and that's fine. So that's a great um, start, I think. Well, not start, but a great way of changing this alignment very quick. But uh, there's one uh, other <laughs> element that needs to be changed. And that is the middle column borders. Because as you see on phone, it still has right and left uh, border so we want to change that we want um, on tablet uh, sorry on phone we want the middle column to have top and bottom border so it's still like it looks similar visually but it's separated horizontally okay so like i said this border is on column so in the row settings middle column design border you see we have right border one pixel so for tablet we are leaving it because we use flex it's fine but for phone let's remove it and the same thing goes for the left one on phone no border but top border on phone one pixel mm, color global dark color and bottom border on phone one pixel and also global but you see the border doesn't stretches to the whole screen like this does i do want this to <laughs> to stretch <laughs> why doesn't it stretch let's uh, let's see i think it's because the uh, row row settings so in the design sizing the default width of row is 80 percent so let's change that let's make our row full width but only with maximum width of let's do 100 and uh 1200 pixel okay 
So with 100%, and now if uh, if we resize it for mobile, it the line, the border on phone should be uh, filling the entire space horizontally. So let's check that, okay? Let's refresh our front end version. Okay, that's the uh, tablet breakpoint. It's looking good. And now on phone, I would say it's still, well, we could, you know, change it and then, but for me, it's fine. It's fine because on the actual device, it will look very, very nice, I think. Well, we have to try and test it, but I think it should be, it should be fine. So only tablet was kind of uh, problematic. Mm but we fixed that and now um, I think it looks much better, right? So what else uh, can we uh, fix it? Oh, I know, I remember because I kind of don't like the, you see when I refresh the page, the default animation here for the icons, mm -mm, not a biggest fan. So just let me quickly remove it design animation no animation let's try to extend to all the, actually all but i think that that's the only <laughs> blurs we have here but let's extend hopefully that worked now this section because i kind of added it uh, last week and didn't pay much attention to it but like it's uh, too much, uh, too much text here. Like there's this text on my thumbnail, there's this title here, and there's even text on the YouTube preview here. So I should probably maybe change the thumbnails or um, use featured image instead. But I, what definitely will help for now at least is removing the title. But it's also not possible using the block settings, I think. Let me just make sure. So here are the elements we can uh, select to use or not use. So we can featured image, read more, author, date, category. Okay, so no field <laughs> for, for selecting the title, uh, the block module author, assumed that everyone would want to display title and that kind of makes sense but in this case i kind of don't want to display the title so let me remove it also with css and i will also use it inside here not i won't create a class because that's probably the only block module i'll be uh, using so let's do it here in the custom css we can target the title right so let's try with display none, none. okay that's pretty good or actually yeah I agree that it kind of is important but I do like the um, idea of uh, being able to actually hit play because we changed the um, post, uh, post, um, the post, how is it called? The post, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the post format. Oh my, I forgot. So we've changed the post format to video and that's why, because the, the first thing we have here is the video, that's why the blog uh, module display the video itself and i think it's kind of nice that you can actually hit play right here you don't have to go to a separate page and then uh, watch it so i'm going to stick with removing the title for for now but i can see that how how that maybe may not be the best uh, idea but uh, i can see that we will need to target it with some custom CSS anyway, I'm guessing I have to inspect that, but let's try uh, adding a CSS class instead. I don't like to um, mix using the 
um, module settings and custom CSS code somewhere, someplace else. If I'm editing using the module settings, that's only when I know I can do everything I want to edit within the module. But in this case, I would have to add, uh, remove the title by adding CSS here, but then fixing the alignment with some custom CSS. So that's not a great way to, to be adding uh, CSS in so many places. So instead, let's add a CSS class. Let's do DL home blog, for example. Okay, let's save that and double save this. <laughs> and let's see here. Okay, that uh, hasn't changed because I removed the CSS. But now if we inspect, okay, so uh, down here, let's see, it's kind of, hmm. okay, let's see. First, we have to target the, the title. Let me close that. Let's fix this so you can see better. This can be smaller. Okay, so H2 entry title. Okay, let's go to our style sheet. Home page. Okay, home page. So let's do blog. Mm. Okay, and I forgot what was it? The entry title. So display none. Okay, that's the first uh, first step. Back here, so that would say display none, just so I have a preview. And now let's see what's causing this space here. We have this. Okay, there's main video container has a margin bottom what if it wouldn't have oh that's one step closer right so let's do this i'm copying that css class and let's add that to my style sheet we want to target this class within the dl home block not everywhere okay margin bottom zero okay back here what else okay this post meta is even though hidden it's kind of still here <laughs> let's try with simple display none okay that should do it so Again, I will copy this so I don't forget. And back here, we have post meta. Or oh, actually, we can uh, add this selector. We don't need a separate uh, separate rule set here because we already are hiding a title. So we can use that. This and this. By adding a comma, I can choose multiple targets for my CSS. Okay, so this and this is hidden. Still some space. And that is actually a padding on the article. Or no, it's, let's see. Yes, that's the, the green part, which is padding. Let's try with padding bottom zero. Okay, it's good. There's oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot to take you with me to Chrome. <laughs> so, um, okay, I added this, but this was the padding on you see article the green, um, the green element represent the padding in the box model. So that's where the space is because the container inside is already smaller. So this is the, um, the article itself has a bottom padding, which is not great. So let's remove it. But let me see how can I target. Let's, let's use ETPB post class. OK, so back here. Um, 
this is padding bottom so we don't have that here yet but we can add that okay so I'm not sure if uh, this will be specific enough. Let's uh, save that. Let me change that. Let's save that file and we'll see if that kind of works uh, for this block module. Oh, sorry. Let me take you to Chrome. And let's refresh. Oh, no, it didn't upload it yet. Once more, it should be there now no hey let's see if if our css is loaded by the browser because that's the common issue with me going live that the browser doesn't uh, see what I'm adding inside my style sheet so that's not uh, let me see if we have the DL home block that's fine so we saved the DV builder settings but there's no okay let's refresh once again hmm. so I'm I guess we just needed to wait 30 seconds okay so uh, so yeah I like it because it's kind of basically list just a um, bunch of videos so i could uh, you know add a free column row and embed youtube videos instead but i would need to edit this every time i'm adding a new post and by using a blog module this will update itself automatically so great for me less work right so i kind of like how it uh, displays but there's one thing um, that I do not like so just let me show you you see this this is kind of annoying <laughs> but but yeah what else can you do when you have three elements so on tablet before it goes to being full width we have this awkward three elements here and I would like to simply hide this one it should be uh, it should be fine because it's actually this is the fifth episode fourth and that's the third one so by hiding it I will just display most two of the most recent so it's still okay and to do that let's inspect how we can target only the second post in the first column and only on tablet okay a little tricky let's see so when we are using the grid um, the grid uh, the grid <laughs> sorry grid layout inside the block module we uh, it kind of gets wrapped within this complex container the salvatore content with different columns and this is actually one column and this is the other so the the third element goes to the column together with the first one and then the second is in the second column it's kind of confusing but you see when i hover over that should be clear right so we want to target only the second article here and right now you can see you see the this css bit here so et pv column block grid and column size one of two which is basically a css class that is only added when we are in a tablet view because well that's how it works <laughs> when it's on a phone there's no point of using two columns so there we won't see this column size one of two uh, css class but as you can see it uh, this selector this exact selector targets etpv post the article 
last child. So the last element of the column when the columns are, when we have two columns, basically, that's what it means. But we, we don't want to hide the second one, right? We, so we want, only want to, we are close. We want to <laughs> target the last element inside. Sorry, I know it's confusing, but bear with me. The last uh, element inside the column with a class size one of two, but only the first of that column. So bear with me if I copy this selector, but change it a little bit. So column size one of two, but only first of type. Uh, sorry, first of type. So the first element that has column size one of two will be a parent of my, my, my target, right? And now display none magic. I love CSS, it's so awesome. Okay, so let's copy that. And I will be a bit more specific. Let me check where is that ETPB block grid class added. Is it on the block module itself? No, it's inside, okay? So my DL home block will be the parent of ETPB block grid, which I use here, okay? So right now, if I want to, mm, if I want to <laughs> add that CSS and target only elements inside my uh, block module with DL home block CSS class, I will use this and like I said, DL home block would be the parent element of the block grid. So we need a space here and that should work. Let's save that and I'm sure it won't work at first. <laughs> Let's maybe change that version number again. I will upload it again and let's see. Do let me know if that was kind of clear. I know it's kind of hard to explain in words, but especially when the selector is so long and complicated. But once you uh, get familiar with the syntax, it's really fun to be able to target uh, elements, uh, you know, with so easily, right? So, okay, let's close that. That for now, the browser sees the element I added. Uh, in the inspector, but let's see if that, yes, it worked. <laughs> okay. So I hope that's kind of useful. Maybe not, not very common. Well, actually it is common, the, the issue with the free um, elements on, on tablet when you're using the blog in grid mode, that would be a common issue. So hopefully that helps, I hope so. Um, do let me know if you have any questions. Let me see if I can see uh, your comments. No questions. I think I was extremely clear. <laughs> that, that would mean that everyone uh, understood everything, right? <laughs> okay, guys. So uh, I know we have probably haven't done a lot today, but I still think it, uh, you know, just the little things that you may uh, be able to incorporate on uh, with your own projects, just a little CSS uh, snippets you might find useful. And I think you, being able to use custom scripts this way is also like a fun exercise maybe to, to try because there's loads of different um, JavaScript uh, plugins or scripts like sliders or I don't know, galleries or what, like you name it, right? <laughs> some, if, if there is some fun effect, someone probably wrote a JavaScript uh, plugin to make it work. So there are many different uh, use cases where you might need to add custom JavaScript inside your, um, to your WordPress page, to your Divi page. So by enqueuing that file in the child theme, or if you're not using a child theme, you can uh, use a plugin like um, Code Snippets, 
or you can create your own plugin. I have a tutorial on that if you would like to know because it's super easy. You can uh, create your functionality plugin and include the JavaScript file uh, through that plugin instead of using child theme. So that's also one way of doing it. And then the tricky part might be um, matching the your HTML markup with what's needed for, for the script. So for the Prism JavaScript, it was very easy. We only needed a container to have a CSS class of language CSS. But usually it may require some more tweaking uh, or adjustments to make the scripts work within DV. But many times it is possible. And if not, you can create your own uh, HTML structure that's required using the code module, but that also would uh, require adding some CSS to style it and you won't be use, uh, able to use the builder, but you know. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that helps. Uh, let me uh, see if we have any questions. Okay, so Valentin asks, is it important to keep track of the script so that uh, you can remember them later. I try to keep it as simple as possible. So if you want a nice way of uh, keeping the track of the scripts used, then the code snippets is very uh, good plugin to do that because it allows you to add notes about the scripts. So you can add a note to yourself. Why did you include it and what, what's, what is it? Uh, what does it do? And this way, you know, you keep track of them. So you know what you're adding. So code snippets plugin is very, very uh, powerful. I, I don't use it myself, but I did try it once and it I kind of liked how, how it is built and it uh, might be uh, helpful. So definitely something to, to try. Uh, okay, guys, so um, let, we'll see. Uh, oh, I no, I wanted to mention it's Friday today, right? So I encourage you to share your work with us. I am very uh, cu curious to see what you've been working on. So uh, if you would like to share your work to get some feedback from fellow web designers, uh, please create a new post inside our Facebook group, tag it with hashtag uh, Feedback Friday, and maybe tell a few words about about the project. Um, and then the fun part, <laughs> search the group for the same hashtag and find someone else's post and then offer your own feedback on their design. This way we can, you know, keep the conversation going and you can actually give something in return uh, for, you know, asking for someone else's time. You can also give your time to for someone else. So uh, enjoy your weekend. Let me, um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you approved. <laughs> uh, next week we can uh, maybe work on the community page because that's kind of still empty. And I do want to invite everyone who visits the web design playground to, to join us. So uh, we have to think of some nice way to display that information on the community page. And so that's probably th that is going to be the plan for for next week. Okay, thank you very much for for joining me. It was very fun. I really like this, uh, this series. I hope you like it too. And enjoy your weekend and I'll see you next time.